All right, everybody, welcome back to Bearded Drums. The clip you just saw at the beginning of the video was me playing my newest acquisition, this little guy right here. This is a Ludwig Junior Orchestra snare drum. It is a three and a half inch by 13 inch snare. It is single tension. And if I'm going by the badge, which I could really only find two sources online to date this drum, it is 1930s and probably more like late 1930s. And ever since I found my first single tension snare, and if you want to see that video, it was a really cool snare drum, you can click right up here. But since I found my first single tension snare, I have kind of fallen in love with the single tension system. And it's kind of counterintuitive, you would think that as drum technology progressed and we got individual tensioning for top and bottom heads, then that would be the gold standard. But many of the drums that I have found that are single tension, and by single tension, if you don't know, meaning when you tighten the top head, it also tightens the bottom head equally. I have fallen in love with this style of snare drum. So I had to dig and dig through old Ludwig catalogs. And like I said, this is a junior orchestra snare drum. So it's a budget model. It is meant more than likely for like a elementary or middle school, you know, student who is in band, orchestral band, something like that. Um, it's not a high end model. And I can't really tell what the shell is because in the old catalogs, it really just lists these drums as metal or wood. Mine is the wood version. And if I'm going by what the wood looks like, compared to other snare drums I've owned. I want to say that it is a mahogany shell with maple reinforcing rings. Now, when I got the drum, everything was actually in working order. The throw off worked fine, which I actually kept the throw off with a lot of these older drums. Sometimes I'll switch it out for something modern that works really well, but the, actually the throw off on this drum works just fine and it looks really cool. So I kept that. The only thing I had to modify on this drum and if you ever see really old snare drums, a lot of the time there will be a throw off, but there will be no butt plate because these really old snare drums don't have snare wires. They have like a wrapped cord snare. Um, on the butt end, there is usually just a piece of leather um, that kind of holds the snares in the end just from slipping through. So it doesn't really adjust. It just kind of holds the end of the cords on the butt end on that side of the rim so that it doesn't pull through when you tighten on the snares. So all I did was I bought a $4 Ludwig butt plate off of Amazon. And that's the only thing I had to modify because I wanted to be able to put actual snare wires on this drum. I had the heads here at the house, so I didn't have to purchase anything extra besides the butt plate. So I put the butt plate on and now it has actual snare wires and all you know, all told, this drum only cost me about $145. Like I always say, if you sit on eBay long enough, you know, a lot of the vintage pieces do go for big money. And a lot of the collectors that sell try to get big money. But a lot of the times, you know, somebody may have a family member that passes away and they find something in the attic or they just find an old drum in their house and they don't really know what it is and they just want to get rid of it. That's when you can find a really good steal on eBay. So as I said, when I got the drum, it had the really old school snare wires on it. These are like wrapped cord snare wires. They really produce more of a thuddy, you know, mellow tone. So what I'll show you now is kind of an A-B comparison. The first clip you'll see is me playing, uh, I believe, to a track with the original snare cords on it. And then I'll cut to the second shot playing to the same track with actual snare wires on it.
So now that you've heard that, you can kind of be the judge. Which one did you like better? The snare cords, which are a little bit mellower and thuddier, or the snare wires, a little more modern, snappy sound. Um, in hindsight, I am happy with the snare wires. It does pr produce a little more volume, but had I kept the snare cords on there, I would have been just as happy because that's what I was looking for with this snare, was a raspy, old school, dirty sound. And that is something I think this drum definitely delivers on, even considering that this is a budget model and this drum is like 80 something years old at this point. So there is my little Ludwig 1930s junior orchestral model snare drum. Um, it's a part of my ever-growing vintage collection. I have spent some time, you know, years ago getting rid of most vintage drums because I didn't play them. But I've been listening to a lot of Steve Jordan lately, a lot of Levon Helm, and starting to listen to some Mike Clark, which has kind of gotten me back into the vintage snare thing and kind of going for that sound. So I've picked up a few drums here and there over the past year. Um, I did a video on my Ludwig Chrome Over Brass Pioneer. You can check that video out by clicking up there. I've added this one to the arsenal and I've got a couple more pieces I'm going to be showing you here in the future. So thanks again, as usual, for watching the video. If you like this content, go ahead and throw a like up there. And if you want to see more, consider subscribing to the channel. And as always, I'll see you on the next one.